tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. It is very early morning hours. Uh, uh, this January 14th, 2023. And what a broadcast report I get to share with you all tonight. We're, I say tonight, I'm so used to saying tonight, but it's really early in the morning. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I have a, a few headlines to share with you uh, with regards to the signs of the times and how it all relates to biblical prophecy. Uh, for instance, an asteroid that uh, scientists are stating, excuse me, stating, could very well make some type of impact on our planet on March, March 11th, 2023 to be exact. That's about 56 days away from this day. Uh, another report we're going to talk on is the volcanic activity that has increased along the Ring of Fire, which is a major sign of end time biblical prophecy. And another report I want to share with you all is an update concerning the third temple. Boy, oh boy, if we are not talking about the signs of the times, as Jesus said, would take place, then, uh, you know, we'll probably have our head in the sand, but we don't. Come on. Uh, we're very aware of the hour that we're living in because we are living in the last days. And Jesus told us, what I tell you, I tell all, watch. Amen. Um, all right. Now, uh, I want to uh, take a moment to quickly remind you all uh, to join and participate in the First Fruits 2023 that is happening right now uh, via our church ministry. Please take a moment to log on to the church ministry website at www.emof.org. E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Right on the front homepage, you're going to see uh, the word of the Lord for this year, uh, 2023. The first fruits offering ends uh, the very last day of this month, January 31st, if it does go up to the 31st, 2023. So you want to uh, just make it an impactful year, a blessed year, uh, just a, a truly a new year. Uh, the first fruit offering, uh, you know, it establishes your year with the word that is given from the very beginning of it all the way to the end. So you want to take this opportunity to participate and uh, may you be blessed in doing so in Jesus name. Again, log on to my website, www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. All right, without further ado, let's get right into the broadcast. I think the first thing I want to talk about is the asteroid because um, it's it, I, 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 it's concerning. I mean, come on, what, what are you talking about that an asteroid could make impact uh, in our, you know, to our planet in March of this year? Well, the report came out as early as 2019, and it was reiterated again at the end of last year, 2022. Uh, but first, let me share with you uh, the report that came out back in 2019 uh, from uh, IB Times, I believe it's called. It says, NASA warns Earth crossing asteroid could cause impact event in 2023. Israel 365 News reported back in November of, of uh, you know, back in November that NASA warned an asteroid could it make impact with the Earth in five months. Again, they reported this back in 2019, but, uh, you know, or not 2019, they reported this back in November 2022. Well, five months uh, is, it takes us directly to the month of March, and uh, more specifically... March 11th, 2023. Yikes. Uh, that is um, three days away, three days after my birthday. My birthday celebrated on March 8th. Uh, let me just get right into the report and see what it says. NASA's asteroid impact monitoring system has detected a space rock that could collide with Earth a couple of years from now. According to the agency, the asteroid follows a natural orbit that intersects with Earth's path around the sun. The dangerous asteroid was detected by NASA Sentry, an automated tracking system that monitors near-Earth objects with non-zero impact probabilities. Well, according to Sentry, the asteroid has been identified as 2005 ED-224. As indicated in NASA's database, 2005 ED-224 is currently traveling at an average speed 
of about 56,000 miles per hour. The agency estimated that the asteroid is about 177 feet wide, which makes it almost as big as the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. 2005 ED-224 asteroid is officially classified as an Apollo asteroid. This means that like other Apollos, 2005 ED-224 has a wide orbit that goes around the Earth and the Sun. Occasionally, the asteroid's orbit intersects with that of Earth as the planet completes a cycle around the massive star. Now, due to the asteroid's natural Earth-crossing orbit, NASA's Sentry detected a total of five, hear me, <laughs> five potential impacts on planet Earth that could be caused by this specific space rock. What that means is that March 11, 2023 may not be the only opportunity, actually, it is not the only opportunity that this asteroid has to hit our planet. Again, NASA's already calculating that this asteroid could make impacts with our planet this March, March 11th. But if it happens to miss, it's still on track to have four more impacts in the year 2028, 2029, 2030, and then one last effort in 2064. Yikes. That is, um, that's concerning. I mean, uh, it's like there, it's like this asteroid is playing bowling and we're a pin in the uh, universe. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and, and to see it one right after the other, again, 2023 and then 2028, 29, 2030, what are the chances of our planet getting hit? Listen, as early as 56 days from now. Anyway, uh, I, you know, this is, this is why uh, we minister the word of God to you so that you can understand how late the hour is and the fact that it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. But the good news is that it's not God's will that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And you may say, Evangelist, what is repentance? Repentance is the godly sorrow, the goodness of God that produces godly sorrow that leads you to surrender your life to Jesus, that leads you to cry out to God to save you from the sin that you have been living in, which is a corruptive nature. It's not so much the bad stuff that you do, it's included, okay? Uh, you know, I lied to my neighbor, does that mean I'm going to hell? It's not just about lying to your neighbor or stealing a pencil when you were in third grade or, uh, you know, making fun of your mom behind her back when you were 10. It's not about that. It's about the nature of man. Each and every person has ever been born, was born with what's called a sin nature because of the fall of man. This is recorded in the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter three. And the fall of man brought in sin. And the Bible says in the book of Romans that the wages of sin is death. And so sin corrupted everything, everything of creation. So much so that by the time Genesis chapter six comes, there was a judgment that was put in all, it, 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 it was wrought throughout all the earth by the hand of God. And it was a judgment of, of a flood, of a great flood, uh, because of the corruptive state of mankind. It was so diabolical, evil, wicked to the core, that it is recorded in chapter 6 of the book of Genesis that every thought and intent of man's heart was evil and wicked continually. So... It had to be dealt with because the Spirit of God in the midst of such corruption was getting grieved. And that is a very dangerous area to be in. It's one thing to anger the Most High. It's another thing to grieve God's Holy Spirit. And that is what happened that brought in the flood. God said, man is but dust. <laughs> I'm not going to continue to allow my spirit to be grieved. His, his, his life will be up to 120 years. And then the judgment came, the flood that came on the planet at the time. Now, Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, 
that as it were in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, I just shared with you briefly what the days of Noah were according to Genesis chapter 6. It was a time of great wickedness, of constant evil, of, of constant diabolical uncleanness. Again, that every intent of man's heart was nothing but evil and wicked continually. Again, I say all this because it is not God's will that any man perish. And to repent means to give your life to Jesus. It means to fully surrender your life to Jesus. And you truly need the helper, the Holy Spirit, to do this. To receive the gift of salvation. To surrender your life to Jesus Christ. To be sorry, if you will, for your sins but it's not so much oh i'm weeping and i'm crying and i do feel bad and i feel guilty and i feel condemned yes that's all a manifestation it's the fruit that really goes down to a deeper root the root of it is the sin nature you could cry out to god in faith you may not feel sorry for your sins you may not understand what that means you may say well i kind of not feeling bad about anything but um by faith god I do cry out to you to save me. I cry out to you to, to, to you know, save my soul. I, I surrender my life to you, and by faith I repent. Now, when you do this by faith, the Holy Spirit is now able to do a miracle in your life, and that's to make you what's called a new creation, where the former you has passed away and a new you emerges. And listen, on the outside, you're going to look pretty much the same, but on the inside, you're a whole new person. A miracle of God has taken place and that sin nature no longer is dominant in your life. The Holy Spirit comes in and he puts the sin nature by the he puts the sin nature by his own power under subjection to the word of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above and against the knowledge of God. And then it says, bringing every thought to the captivity, to the obedience of Christ Jesus, and punishing disobedience when your obedience has been fulfilled. So that's the sin nature that has been dominant. It has been God in your life. And it's not, it has not been a good God. It has been a, a, a lowercase g God. It has been none other than the enemy, the devil, Satan. Um, but when, when you surrender your life to Jesus by faith, when you surrender your life to God and say, God, take over my life, I do repent. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't want to be, um, ca you know, I don't want to be cast into hell. I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to perish when I, when, when, when you are offering the gift of salvation, when you are offering the gift of eternal life. So by faith, I give my life to you again. Now the Holy Spirit is able to come in and work a work that only he can do by his power and that's to bring the sin nature to a standstill in your life and now everything changes you have a new mind you have a new heart you have new eyes you see sin for what it is before you surrendered you like you know before you surrendered your life to Jesus you didn't see anything different everything didn't you know day in day out everything was the same um, and you didn't see anything wrong with anything but when you receive the gift of eternal life and the Holy Spirit comes in you, you have new eyes and it's truly true eyes, the eyes of the Lord. And you see everything the way he sees it. And it's a whole nother level. And, um, but it's freedom and it's salvation. And, and, and there's a time that is now set apart for you, um, in consecration and in sanctification. This is, part of the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. I say all of this because we're living in the last days. I say all of this because, again, it is appointed unto man once to die and then to judgment. And all of this is happening. Asteroid, possible asteroid impact in March 2023. You know? Um, it, it's 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 mind-boggling. But, it, you know, regardless of an asteroid hitting or not, people are dying every day. And you want to be ready. You want to be ready. People, there are hundreds of, if not thousands of people that go to church every week. And they really think that they're right with God and they're not. 
they really think they're right with God because they pay their penance or they pay their tithe or they just go up every week to the altar and they ask God to forgive them of the sins that they did that, that whole week and then they get crossed on the forehead or they get hands laid on them and then they, they go on their way uh, with the peace for seven days, if you will, until they go to church and do it all over again. That's not salvation. That's a lie. That's not truth. It's not about repenting of everything that you did when you were in third grade and in fourth grade and as an adult. I mean, it, it, yes, it, it may come with the territory. And a lot of times it does come with the territory. Before you know it, you'll be saying, Lord, forgive me for what I did. What did I do to that person? Why did I say that? You know, and next thing you know, you'll be asking people to forgive you for things that you did because you, you are convicted. But it's a, it's a good conviction by the power of God's Holy Spirit. But the salvation comes when, again, you give your life to Jesus Christ. You become born again by the power of God's Holy Spirit because of what Jesus did for you on the cross at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. He became the sacrifice in your place. He, he, he received the judgment of God in your place. He received uh, the penalty of the punishment in your place. So that you don't go to a place of darkness. You don't go to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell is real. And people do not understand how late the hour is. And they need to know. We need to get with the program. Because um, time, will you know, time will delay no longer. Destruction will not wait for you to get saved. The devil is like seething at his teeth. Hoping that you ignore this message. And you just are willing to risk your soul to, to an eternal damnation. Don't do it. You're not a fool. You were born with a purpose. You're made in the image of God, and He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. So give your life to Christ now. Listen, I want to continue with the headline report. Uh, continuing on with this asteroid that could possibly make impact in March. Goodness gracious. It says here, one of these... Uh, well, I mean, let, let me go back a bit. It says, due to the asteroid's natural Earth crossing orbit, NASA's Sentry detected a total of five potential impacts, just as I shared with you, the particular years, 2023. And in 56 days from today, this, this asteroid can make impact on our planet. If it misses us, it has another opportunity because it's coming back in 2028. If it misses that mark, it has another opportunity to hit our planet in 2029. If it misses that mark, and listen, this is regardless if it misses it or not. If it makes impacts, it's coming back again in 2030. Dear goodness. And then again in 2068. It says here one of these is a gravitational keyhole. This is a region in space that's heavily affected by the gravitational pull of a nearby planet. If 2005 ED-224 passes through this keyhole, the asteroid could get nudged into a path that it will take it straight to Earth. So goodness, my, oh my, let's hope that that does not happen. We can pray that that does not happen. Space wars, come on, don't we have a... Uh, a unit in our military here in the United States government that is called Space Wars? Is it for this? Or are they expecting something a little bit more sinister? Which, asteroid impacts is not innocent by any means, but when I say sinister, I'm talking about on a extraterrestrial level. That is probably for another broadcast because there's another, there's an actual report that came out uh, a few hours ago uh, that said that the Pentagon has received uh, approximately 500 more reports of unidentified flying objects from people that are shaking their heads saying what is going on there's activity in our sky it's suspicious it's 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 suspect we want answers and the pentagon is claiming to rush on getting these answers so uh anyway what does the bible have to say about asteroids so let's take a moment let's read some scriptures here revelation chapter 8 verse 8 says the second angel blew his trumpet and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. When he, talking about Jesus, opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. The full moon became like blood. Second Kings, uh, well, let me skip uh, Second Kings for a second. Genesis chapter 19, verse 24 through 25, also talks about asteroid type of activity. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. Listen, 
We're receiving the whole counsel of God when it comes to these 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 headline reports proving that we're living in the last days, proving not that we need man's proof on the words of Jesus, but if anything, confirming the word of the Lord when it comes to uh, the hour uh, you, you know that we're living in, the fact that we're living in the last days. So we're giving you uh, you know New Testament scriptures and Old Testament scriptures again. Rightly, uh, this is um, bringing uh, forth the full counsel of God as led by the Spirit of God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 13 verse 10 for the stars of heavens and their constellations will not give their light the sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light um, so th this is just a, a, a few scriptures with regards to asteroids let's get into the another into another headline report uh, this one I don't think I, I actually printed out but it's okay uh, volcano activity is increasing around the world particularly around an area of our planet called the ring of fire so let me share with you what uh the report says here a wave of over 27 volcanic eruptions have scientists and other experts concerned uh, this week volcano discovery reported that 27 different volcanoes are erupting and many others are showing signs of waking up Several of these eruptions have experts concerned. The two biggest volcanoes in Hawaii erupted simultaneously two weeks ago. Uh, it's been a, actually probably a little bit more than that now. Mauna Loa, the world's largest active volcano, erupted for the first time since 1984. The smaller but more active Kilauea also erupted. Uh, and, and, and this dual eruptions has not taken place, friends, since the year 1984. In most recent reports, you have the Tonga volcano that erupted. Still, a hundred people. Um, you know, I or let I me mean, say if I'm looking here, I don't know if anybody was hurt here. It says hundred people still living in temporary shelters after homes were destroyed by an actual tsunami after this uh, this um, this volcano erupted. And uh, it's they're saying, listen, this thing has an imminent risk of temporary breach. So we see volcanic activity increasing and uh the bible has something uh to say about this but before i, I go into what the scriptures say let me read a little bit about the report here um indonesia sits on the pacific ring of fire where tectonic plates collide causing frequent volcanic activity as well as earthquakes most earthquakes and volcanic eruptions do not strike randomly, but occur in specific areas such as a long plate boundaries. One such area is known as the Circum Pacific, known as the Ring of Fire, where the Pacific plate meets many surrounding plates. The Ring of Fire is the most seismically and volcanically active zone in the world. The Ring of Fire is a 25,000 mile long horseshoe shaped region encompassing the Pacific Ocean. It is the most seismically active area on the entire planet. It includes most of California, Washington State, and Alaska. The Ring of Fire includes a total of 452 volcanoes. More than 75% of active volcanoes exist in the world today. About 90% of the world's earthquakes and 81% of the world's largest earthquakes occur along the Ring of Fire. All but three of the world's 25 largest volcanic eruptions of the last 11,700 years occurred at volcanoes, you guessed it, along the Ring of Fire. Clearly, there's no doubt about volcanic activity being on the rise. There were about 25 significant volcano eruptions globally in the first 18 years of the century compared with approximately 65 in the entire 20th century. They say that this increased activity and intensity are magnified due to recent population growth in the affected regions of the Pacific. Of course, we have to line it up with biblical prophecy and we're going to do that here in a moment. Now, um, Let's talk about the Ring of Fire for a second because it's actually scriptural. The Ring of Fire is something, is a, it's an actual term that's used in childbirth. I have six children, happy to give birth to them. And so I may know a little something about the Ring of Fire. Not every woman experiences the Ring of Fire in their childbirth, but many have. And so what is it when it comes to a 
woman giving birth in labor. The ring of fire during birth, quite simply put, is the crowning of the baby's head. As a baby's head begins to make an appearance, there is a severe burning that the woman goes through, which is called crowning. And uh, it, it brings forth a sensation, and that's why it's dubbed the ring of fire in childbirth. Well, you line that up with what the Bible has to say, and um, we see that the, uh, the planet is going through labor pains. The Gospel of John chapter 16 verse 21 says whenever a woman is in labor she is you know she has pain because her hour has come but when she gives birth to the child she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world something is happening in our planet that is causing an increase in volcanic and earthquake activity and I believe that the answer is found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24 where Jesus said that there will be signs of the times and the end of the age and that the waking of the planet in such a dire stressful situation or state if you will presents the fact that we are living not just in the last days but in the last generation prior to the second return of Jesus Christ prior to the day of the Lord let me share with you a couple of scriptures here in what the Bible has to say about labor pains Revelation chapter 12 verse 2 says and she was with child and she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth Hosea chapter 13 verse 13 the pains of childbirth come upon him he is not a wise son for it is not the time that he should delay at the opening of the womb Isaiah chapter 13 verse 8 says they will be terrified pains and anguish will take a hold of them they will writhe like a woman in labor they will look at one another in astonishment their faces aflame Psalm chapter 48 verse 6 says panic sees them there anguish as of a woman in childbirth so here we see that childbirth is related to the day of the Lord Isaiah chapter 21 verse 3 for this reason my loins are full of anguish pains have seized me like the pains of a woman in labor I'm so bewildered I cannot hear so terrified I cannot see the Bible tells us that when they say peace and safety then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape that is regarding the last days that's regarding uh, the time that the um, I, a false messiah will rise and bring forth not just a speech about peace and prosperity and peace on earth and good world towards men but will actually usher it in by a new system accompanied by a very different spirit and it is not the Holy Spirit but it will be what is known as an Antichrist spirit and this spirit will be very um, it, it, it will be full of goodness it, it will feel good it, it, it knows the five senses of a human being so that what you taste what you touch what you smell what you see what you hear all of it is going to be tantalized by this spirit that will accompany this false messiah which leads me to my final headline report that I want to share with you all concerning the third temple this is uh, uh, the latest update this came out um, just uh, 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 not even a couple of weeks ago Nesset committee discusses whether a new minister will be appointed for the third temple all right now it's starting to make sense why the planet is going through labor pains while volcanic activity is increasing and earthquake activity is increasing and asteroids are trying to play bowling with our with our planet uh, we may be looking at the rise of the Antichrist beast system on this planet before we know it. And I don't know if an asteroid impact may be mercy before this, because this fourth kingdom beast system is, is, is prophesied to be the most terrible system on the planet.
the most terrible kingdom of the planet, the most terrible um, spirit on the planet that the world has ever seen. So much so that Jesus said about the time of the beast system, this false messiah rising, this, this spirit that will arise, this antichrist spirit. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, in verse 15, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Hear this. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no nor ever shall be. And it's going to be so terrible that God is going to give us a grace and a mercy during this time because he, he goes on to say, he says, And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And then if anyone says to you, look, here is a Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert. Or do not go out. Or I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. Please forgive me. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert. Do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So here is that portion of scripture prophecy of the last days and now here I share with you this headline regarding a new minister that they're saying will be appointed for the third temple does that mean the third temple is already built or is it about to be built let's read the report coming in from Israel 365 news it says during a discussion in a Nesset committee concerning a new law a question was raised about its application after the construction of the third temple Though the suggestion was in jest and generated lighthearted banter, most of the opposition to the law came from the religious MKs, while many of non-religious lawmakers said they supported the law and did not oppose the temple. Hebrew language Kekar Hashabat reported that on Wednesday morning, the Nessus Constitution, Law and Justice Committee discussed Amendment Number 14 to one the country's basic law titled The Government, which adopted in its current form in 2001 to outline the composition and function of the Israeli government. The amendment currently being considered allows for the addition of ministers. The question was raised by M.K. Mikhail Shir Yesh Atid, who is a non-religious M.K., if the government would be able or even required to appoint an additional minister if the Third Temple is constructed. Hmm, all right, all right. It should be noted that Shir opposed the bill and clearly intended the question to be a critical note of sarcasm to illustrate the shortcomings of such an intended law. The suggestion caused a bit of consternation as questions were raised if voting in favor of the amendment implied support for the construction of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Several MKs noted that they favored the law, but not the temple. Others noted that they opposed the law, but not the temple. This caused, obviously, a moment of confusion when a vote was called with one MK asking if they were voting for the temple or the amendment. How fascinating. Several of the religious MKs voted nay, presumably opposing the amendment, but not necessarily opposing the third temple. You see, the reformed Jews will make the temple for us, one religious MK noted. I have no problem that there will be a temple, MK sure said, and may as well come tomorrow, as far as I'm concerned. Shlomo Kahir Likud raised the question, who will design the third temple? Ayelet Shakir? Shakid from the Yamina party is currently serving as Minister of Interior. She does not identify as religiously observant. M.K. Shur responded, even a woman can design the temple. 
M.K. Uriel Bousseau noted that there really is religion in the opposition. Yikes! Oh, right. Well, that is, listen, it's more interesting news, right? What does the Bible have to say about the building of a third temple? Let's get right into some specific scriptures. And I, I believe that any building of a third temple will also usher in a type of peace agreement between the, the, um, between the Jews and the Gentiles, as what the Bible says. But let me, let's, let, let's start off with some particular scriptures. Let's go to Daniel uh, chapter 7, verse 23 to 26. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 through 26. And I'll tell you, this ring of fire and the active and the you know, the active um, uh, activity, the activity, the active activity, that makes no sense. The active volcanic activity that is on the, that, that's, that's, that's increased and, and the earthquake activity that, that's increased and the, the threat of asteroids that's coming in as I'm sharing with you uh, tonight um, or this morning, I should say. I just want to say, with regards to the ring of fire and, and how that represents, a, it's it's a term for during childbirth and how it represents a crowning of the baby's head. Something has happened, you know. It just we had the this coronavirus. Remember, you know, it's still you know they're saying something may come off even worse than that. Uh, but that um, uh, you know that really changed a lot of people's lives when that hit, and then you know the vaccine mandates and so forth. But coronavirus didn't that mean like crown poison or something and I just there's a possibility I, I mean again we're looking at signs of the times what what's the possible chance or possible possibility if, if you will of of the Antichrist possibly being on the scene already waiting to arise you know it's a it's, I say the word scary thought, but of course we also say that God has not given us a spirit of fear, come on, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So when I say scary, it's more the fact that it, it would catch so many by surprise. So many would be unaware, so many would follow this Antichrist, this beast, this false messiah. And he's not, he's not going to have the label of false messiah. He's going to be a God to many people. And he will declare himself as God. I, I'll prove it to you here in scriptures. Let me first give you some specific portions of the scripture pertaining to a third temple. Daniel chapter 7 verse 23 to, through 26 says, Thus he said, The fourth kingdom shall, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall attend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. So that is one portion of scripture. Another portion is in chapter 9, book of Daniel, still chapter 9, uh, verse 25 through 27. Let me start it in verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. That's it right there. That, that's, that's the portion of scripture specific to the third temple. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Now, this is the Messiah, Jesus. And then he says, and the people of the prince who is to come. Now, that prince is the beast. 
shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Talking about Jerusalem, a portion of Jerusalem will be destroyed and the sanctuary, which is the third temple. That's um, confirmed in Revelation chapter 11. And till the end of the war desolations are determined, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And that's going to be very, very bad covenant. It, now, it's not going to sound bad. And it's not going to look bad. It's going to be very promising. It's going to be, I mean, listen, it's going to be as close to heaven on earth as you can get. Okay? But then it says here, him confirming a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. Even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. This is a very serious portion of scripture. And, uh, you know, unless, unless the days were shortened, come on, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. There's another portion in Amos. Let me share with you another scripture on the third temple. Amos chapter 7, verse 17 says the following. It says, Therefore thus says the Lord, your wife shall be a harlot in the city. Your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by survey line. Okay? That is Jerusalem being uh, divided. You shall die in a defiled land, and Israel shall surely be led away captive from his own land. That's further confirmed in Zephaniah. I know nobody wants to know that, but it's further confirmed... In Zephaniah, ah, uh, I said Zephaniah, Zechariah, okay, Zechariah chapter 14 says, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity. That's the dividing of Jerusalem. Half of it will be under captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Come on. So thank the Lord. There's always a remnant. God always has a remnant for himself. With all this happening, what manner of persons ought we to be but in holy righteousness and conduct? Listen, I always find it intriguing to share with you all real-time events. Breaking, say breaking news. This is breaking news to me. It's probably to you too. Definitely world reports that match Bible prophecy, that are in line scripturally with end time prophecies that are happening again in real time. It is an honor to share with you all uh, these reports, uh, but the purpose of this church ministry uh, is to let you know, is to preach to you the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the day of the Lord is at hand, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that it is not his will that you perish, but that you come to repentance. Broad is the way to destruction. Narrow is the way to life. There are few that find it, but you can be part of that few. It's not, it, it's, it's not few because it's hard. It's few because many don't want to give up the life that they claim is so good to them. But it's not going to lead them to salvation. I pray that the Spirit of God minister to you tonight, today, and that he bless you to have ears to hear what he's saying so that you can receive the gift of salvation, so that you can surrender your life to him, so that you can be saved, become born again, become what the Bible calls a new creation, where old things all pass away, all things become new, all things are of God now, and you're empowered. You're not afraid anymore. You're loved. You're not lost anymore. That's only possible through Jesus. But praise be to God, it is possible. Please give your life to Jesus. Cry out to God in Jesus' mighty name. Friends, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's, today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a great pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God. World Reports, clearly matching biblical prophecy. Uh, I want to again invite you to participate and join me uh, for the First Fruits 2023 
uh, that is happening right now, log on to my website, learn more about it. It's very simple. It truly is giving unto the work of the Lord, establishing your year as, as long as we get to have it. Come on. This is what faith is about. Truly, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we get to establish our year, and you get to donate on good ground. And uh, by doing so, allow the Lord to bless you with a great blessing, according to Malachi chapter 3. So uh, anyway, the day of the Lord is at hand, so please give your life to Christ. Learn more about me and my church ministry. Again, participate in the 2023 First Fruit Offering. Uh, it is on my website, www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Uh, if you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption uh, to abstain from receiving any type of shot, uh, vaccination, inoculation, email me, anita at emoaf.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F.org. Friends, it is again a privilege and a pleasure. May God richly bless you until the next broadcast. Bye-bye.